listening to Gear Wars Live Worldwide Podcast. What's up, family? What's up, family? Welcome to Positive Power 21. That's right. Double XI is right. We're here, y'all. It's the Lakeisha Mosley Show. Right, featuring Lakeisha Mosley. And our special guest tonight is Talene Harris. You know her. Big gospel voice. The singing machine herself. What's up, Lakeisha? What's up? What's up? I'm awesome, awesome. You ready to get the show going? I'm ready. All right, let me let her out of the gates. This is Talene Harris. <laughs> Have a great show, ladies. Hey, hey, good evening to everyone. Awesome. Hey, Talene, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so mm. much, Lakeisha. How are you this evening? I'm doing fabulous this morning. You know, it's so funny. I was having a little bit of technical difficulties, but that just tells you that this is about to be a powerful show and that the devil is alive and that nothing will stop us. Man, I'm right. All right. <laughs> yes, well, I welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Leticia Mosley Show where we discuss those unseen and unspoken issues of life while providing inspirational guidance to men with love and understanding. Our amazing special guest is national recording artist Colleen Harris. She has already you already heard her voice, and I want her to tell her tell a little bit about herself. Everyone pretty much know a little bit, but I want her to tell a little bit about herself currently what's going on. Colleen, let us know. Oh my goodness! Wow. Well, I am, uh, as you said, a recording artist, but I am also many other things. I'm a business owner, entrepreneur. Um, I have two businesses. I am a mother. I am a wife. I am a pastor. Uh, I have been blessed to be able to act and uh, in several stage plays and, you know, really just expand the gifts that God has given me in the arena of, uh, of, of entertainment and the arena of, of the arts. You know, and so it's been a blessing. It's been a journey. I'm still on it. <laughs> and I uh, have met a lot of wonderful people along the way, some um, famous, some not so famous. But at the end of the day, um, as I, I always share, is that when people encounter me, um, my, my testimony is that I want them to know the love of God. I want them to know that, you know, they've met a person that's genuine, that's kind, that's caring, um, and that, you know, really is concerned about the things that 
concern God and the things that are happening in the world. So those are just a few things about me, and I, you know, I'm sure as we go along in the interview, we'll be able to share more things. Absolutely. Dwayne, I'm just honored to have you today because you have, have such a humble heart. I feel your spirit coming through the airwaves, and I'm so excited about tonight because tonight's topic is about godly connection. Mm. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's, it's something that is very huge in my heart to discuss because we can go so many different ways when we talk about God with connections. I mean, we can talk about the good, the bad, <laughs> the ugly. We can talk about the past, the present. But mainly what um, I want to focus on is just how it's been for you. You know, what has been your history in God with connections? You know, have you noticed, you know, who's been on your side, who you mm-hmm. collaborated with? You know, is it the devil you collaborate with? Is it the Holy Spirit? Is it mm-hmm. yourself? You know, me, myself, and I, sometimes we enclosed by ourselves. But, you know, I know for me, for sure, for me, I can talk about that all day long as far as how we feel about the connections, you know, feel isolated, feel blocked because of history. But tell us some times, you know, where you uh, had godly connections and an experience where you felt like it was going in the direction that you wanted or not. Yeah, wow, that is a heavy, heavy topic, Rikisha. <laughs> um, you know, being connected to the vine um, is, is the vine of God is so important. Being connected to the right vine is so important. And the best way that I can probably describe knowing whether or not you are connected to the right people in your life is that you you have to look at the outcome of the fruit in your life. Is your life bearing fruit? And those that are in your life, are they helping you to bear fruit? Um, as you said, sometimes we struggle with the inner me. You know, we struggle with the inner me on the inside. Um, oftentimes that can try to sabotage the things um, that are destined for you to obtain at a certain time. Some things can be delayed. Some things being delayed that may not necessarily be a denial, but because you made a certain choice or decision or because you were around a certain sphere of influence, it can get you to the place where you where you may not meet your destination at the appointed exact time maybe that God maybe wanted you to, but it doesn't always mean that you are totally delayed or denied. Um, sometimes it may be that your that your life is cut short because God sees that you won't change your heart. Your heart is is bitter. It's rooted in bitterness. It's it's rooted in things that would prevent God from allowing you to move forward. And He sees and knows your heart because, of course, He judges He judges your heart. So if He sees that it's not going to change that you're going in the wrong direction, he may decide to say, okay, you know what, I'm just going to help you bow out gracefully <laughs> and not even go further into a destructive, you know, downward spiral in your life. We all have our own journey. So as you connect with people, you do have to say, is this a God connection? Or is this a fleshly connection? Is this somebody that I want to attach to because of what they have and who they are? Or is this truly something that God is connecting so that we can do something great for him? So that's my take on it. Wow, that is so amazing because you really spoke on different levels of your experience with it. You know, you talked about how, you know, the godly connections and if they're not godly connections. And, you know, I love when you were talking about as far as, you know, understanding if it's from God or not and learning from it. You know, have you ever experienced where, you know, situations will suffocate you? And, you know, have you evaluated that value and did you learn something from it? My goodness, yeah, you know, um, been in several relationships that I felt 
uh, were very suffocating to who I was as a person. Um, I felt like they didn't understand me. They, they, they liked all of the attributes and the things that, um, that were me, but they didn't truly understand me. So it was more of, okay, well, I want to be around her, or I want to be her friend, or I want to be married to her, I want to be connected to her in some kind of way because these are, these are the attributes that she has that I feel like I can utilize for what I'm trying to do. And so, you know, you have to, you have to really have a good level of discernment and then once you see it, you have to recognize it for what it really is because once, as I said earlier, our hearts are very deceitful, right? So sometimes our hearts can get in the way because we, we have grown attached to the individual. And we say, you know, I really don't want to let them go for whatever reason, you know, they become a part of your heart. And so it's almost like God has to do surgery on you. And he has to say, okay, this is what's really best for you. And I promise you, you're going to get through this. It's going to be a testimony. You're going to be a living, walking, breathing miracle in some cases because some people can really get engrafted in your heart that you almost feel like it is going to take surgery because if, if not, you're going to have a huge hole in your heart. <laughs> so um, those are some of the things that I have learned in my journey that um, that I have to be very mindful of why people are connecting and I have to have a certain level of discernment to realize and understand that um, you know either they're connecting for good reasons or they're not connecting they have ulterior motives and my mom taught me early on you know to always look out for those things because the gifts that I had were at a very young age, so she knew she had to, like, try to cultivate me in a certain way so that when those things came along, I would be able to recognize them. And then not only that, God gave me, you know, and it's still constantly, you know, heightening my level of discernment. Because I don't know about you, Lakeisha, but um, every time you, you go to another place in God, your discernment needs to go to another level also because there's going to be stuff that's coming at you that you've never seen before. And so we have to really get in a, in a place of realizing, you know, people say all the time, new, new level, new devil, you know, that type of thing. But I think as you do progress, there are certain things that you deal with that you didn't deal with before because now – if you really have been chosen by God to do something, and he says, okay, hey, this is what I want you to do, and now even more so the enemy's coming after you because he doesn't want you to reach destiny and purpose. So with that in mind, you know, there's always going to be something that's coming that has even a more deeper um, plot and scheme to try to get you to prevent you from reaching the the plateaus that God has for you because he takes you from glory to glory to glory. And so I just love the word because the word will always tell you if you're listening or you're looking will illuminate your path for you. My goodness, you really just spoke on something. And I, I, I'm, I'm speechless and I'm excited speechless because you are touching so many people's lives right now. We really feel the hearts right now because a lot of times, you know, we get confused and we get, uh, we don't understand, like, God, this is what you called me to do. I'm feeling good. Why everything has acted in a certain way? What's going on? Like, they were in my corner first, and now they're not. And then, you know, when then God gives you that sermon and says, you know, daughter, you know, I'm taking you to another level, and when you go to a different dimension, you're, you're so good. You know, shrink. You know, so some people that were there for you, they can't go with you at the next level. And you spoke on that, like you said, you know, when you experience those things, you know, you realize you were being used either for your gift, mm -hmm. and then you would know that you weren't being nurtured in your gift. You know? Yes, and they become a leech. It's like they're sucking the life out of you to the place that 
when God puts you in position, you don't have the life and the motivation and the passion and the drive and the ambition and all of the things that you need in order to push to get to where God has for you. And it's just like draining you dry, and you're trying to fit, find out why you're – and it's interesting because not only will it happen spiritually, but then it translates into the natural, right? So you, you start physically feeling like you're tired and lethargic and, you know, kind of just out of sorts and not really yourself and, and that sort of thing. And so, you know, we got to really um, know who we are, know who we are, and protect that grace or anointing or gifting or talent or whatever you want to dot, 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 dot behind it. You have to protect that which God gives you because he's looking to see if you're going to be a good steward over what he's given you. My Lord, you said a mouthful there. And, you know, by saying it for protection, isn't Jesus like a protector? I always say that, you know, I say every, every day, I, I'm just saying to you, Jesus is the ultimate entrepreneur in the world. He don't really look at him that way. But you got to understand him for how his, you know, how he was with his 12 disciples, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, he saw their gifts, okay? He didn't try to change them. He didn't try to make them say, you know, what, you're not doing the right thing or you're doing the right thing. He didn't say anything like that. He saw their gifts. He came to them and said, look, I see what you are. Like he mm-hmm. said, you know, to Peter, look, I know that you're the master fisherman. You got this. You got it going on. This is what you do. But I, I, I. he didn't tell him that I was going to cha- transform you, but he led him and showed him insight and his mindset open up where, you know, he was not only going to be a fisher than a food, but he was going to be a fisher than a man. And, mm-hmm. you know, I love Jesus how he's like that. You know, he's not only just a cultivator of gifts, but he is a coach about legacy. Yeah. You know, he's always thinking, come on, he's thinking bigger, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you ever, when you thought about your gifts, when you thought about, you know, the people that have been in your life, uh, you know, not just so much negative, but the positive people that have been mm-hmm. in your life. When did you, when was it to that where you know that, you know, what this is the, this is the God sent gift for me to, to nurture in my gift and take you to the next level? Mm-hmm. Wow. I've had so many people along the way that have been um, instrumental in my life, whether it was, um, you know, coaching me musically, coaching me in my life, um, you know, sharing with me their pitfalls and ups and downs so that I could be, you know, stronger in, in my resolve as who I was and who I am as a person. Um, I think, you know, gosh, there's so many people. I don't want to get into naming names because <laughs> somebody <laughs> might get me. You didn't call my name to me. Yes. <laughs> but all of you know who you are, you beautiful people that have been in my life that have helped me um, through so many tough times, rough times, great times, happy times, joyous times. Um, you know, one thing I can say about my family is that they were so, so supportive of me growing up. Um, I probably was one of those ones that had the biggest tribe, you know, at at events and talent shows and pageants and all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, they were they always came out in droves because my mom's side I have a really uh, big side of the family on that side, and they were just always supportive. You know, um, and that means a lot. You know, and that's one of the things that I want to say to parents tonight. Um, Because this is on my heart, as as, as I just spoke that, God just said, just speak this also. It is so important for you to encourage your children and to let them know that they are somebody special in, in the world that God has placed them in. Because if they don't feel that from you, then most of the times, nine times out of ten, they don't get that from from the world, right? So as a parent, we got to nurture our children to say, hey, you can do it. You you did a great job. You know, you if you want to try something, let them try different things to kind of see where their giftings are and then begin to help them cultivate, you know, those gifts. And I can honestly say that my mom, um, was was that for me?
me. You know, she let me try any and everything. And <laughs> bless her heart, I know she got tired of me dragging her all over the creation, here, there, and everywhere, this pageant, that pageant, and, you know, this event and that event. But she was always so supportive, and she was there, whether it was taking pictures or making sure my hair was right or we running all over to the malls, you know, trying to find the right outfit and things like that. I mean, those are things that I can look back and say, I really treasure those things because they sold into my life and they helped me to know that I was somebody special because the world is constantly chipping away at you and saying that there isn't something special about you, um, you know, oftentimes. Not all the time, but, but oftentimes. And even those, Lakeisha, that are in that are in the limelight or famous and people that you know that you see all the time, they deal with a lot of insecurities also, even though people are shouting their names and, you know, you know, always, um, you know, wanting to take a picture with them or say something to them or just, you know, want to be in their presence. You know, they go through those types of challenges also. Wow, that is so real and um, that's so transparent, you know, being a parent, you know, I, I'm a mother of three boys um, and two teenagers and one toddler and I'm always, you know, looking at them saying, God, what do you want me to teach them, you know, and God's like, you know what, just be you. All the good, the bad experiences, all of the perceived failures because they're learning as you're growing in your journey. Um, growing up, I'm an, inner, I'm an inner city kid from Detroit, you know, so I grew up around a lot of uh, artists and a lot of people who were in the limelight, but I see the human side of them. A lot of times people do see people on the cool pet or people on the stage or the war shows, and they say they're not touchable. I talk about that all the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can be at a certain platform where people don't feel like you are actually human. And right. it's like, no, they bleed too, right? So tell me right. a little bit about that. Like, your examples about that. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's interesting you should say that I was, um, a DMV girl. I grew up in the in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, and there was a young lady. I'm not gonna call her name because I don't want to call her out, but <laughs> there was a young lady that was pretty well known and famous in in the in the city, and um, she, you know, had a record deal at a very young age, and she was just doing really, really well. Somebody that I looked up to, I wouldn't say idolized because I don't. I didn't didn't at that time because even at that age I understood that they were people just like me. They put their pants leg on one leg at a time, and and I just admired the gift that they that they had and how they would inspire me with whatever it is that they, um, you know, did. And so this young lady, I had an opportunity. Um, my mom had taken me to this little like kitty cabaret or something, and I couldn't have been any more than about. 12 or 13 years old, but this stuck with me, and um, and I, I went over to her, and I approached her, and I said, oh, you know, I really love your music, blah, 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 and she was like, you know, really kind of like snotty towards me, right, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, what is going on, and, you know, I'm still trying to be, you know, nice or whatever, and, and I said, well, do you mind, you know, if I take a picture with you, she's like, oh, no, I can't do that right now, I have to go to an interview. I was like, oh, okay, okay, well, have a good interview, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm still trying to be polite, and I'm still trying to be respectful, even though she's dissing me big time, right? Yeah. So um, I learned from that later on, um, I was recording my first project, and um, her and I actually got an opportunity to talk. She was around in the studio where I was at the time. And I said, you know, you probably don't even remember when I met you when I was younger. And I can laugh at it now. I said, because I can only imagine the type of pressure that she was under at that age and trying to figure all of that out and the, and the fame and the money and all of that stuff. And, and the interesting thing was that she really didn't want to do it. Her parents were really pushing her to do it. She loved to sing, but she didn't really want to do all of that. 
you know. And so, you know, that was a lesson to me in so many levels. Like when people, and that's why I said it at the top of the show, when people meet you and encounter you, I, I could be having the worst day in the whole wide world, but you would never know it. <laughs> I would be just as nice and as kind to you because I realized you came and said something to me. You didn't have to say anything to me, you know. You didn't have to tell me how I, my music blessed you or how I inspired you or encouraged you or anything like that. And so um, I've learned not to take those things lightly or for granted because that one encounter with someone, and it's a bad one, can spread all over the world faster than your good encounter sometimes. And so, um, I, you know, later on, like I said, I, I realized what she was going through. I didn't hold it against her. But you have even some um, artists, you know, that are adults that carry a certain air or attitude about themselves. And, um, and I've met some really kind, you know, sweet, generous, loving, um, you know, artists that will, will be open to, hey, how you doing, and, you know, sit down and talk with you. Um, there are a few that I can probably call out. Maurette Brown Clark, she's in the D.C. Maryland area. She was really, really nice to me at the Stellar Awards. She sat and talked to me for a long time. She didn't have to do that. She could have went and sat with somebody else famous that she knew. You know, um, trying to think who else. Um, oh, my goodness. Not Kiki Shear, but her mom. Oh, my God. Why well, her name just went right out of my head. <laughs> Karen, Karen Clark here. Met her at the ASCAP um, meet and greet. She's really, really sweet down to earth. You know, talked with her for about 15 or 20 minutes. So, you know, there are people that you encounter that are in that arena um, that are nice people. And they're everyday people. They just happen to have a job that they really love that causes them to be in the public eye. And so... Those are just some of my experiences. That's so real. It's amazing that you mentioned Kiki Shear and um, her mom, Karen Clark Hill, because, mind you, they're Detroiters. Mm -hmm. And I remember them growing up, and I remember Kiki, but she had her voices on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember her mom, and I remember just how transparent and nice they were and just mm -hmm. how um, just you could feel the God in them, just not on the stage, but you felt, yes. you know, personal. So, but... You know, I love how you said that you saw a different perspective as you began to really see them as a human, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, everyone's on their journey, and it, it, it's not personal. It was never personal. They might have been going through anything, something could have happened, and you just happened to be in their view, right. and you just got you just got it that day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So isn't that awesome? Yeah. <laughs> it's like right? It's yes. like, oh, you know, and... I, Sometimes we, uh, sometimes we don't get there, you know, and we're like, God, I need you to help me heal, because it has nothing to do with someone else. It really is just an internal uh, mm -hmm. reflection and perception on ourselves. But he's constantly willing us to understand that everyone um, needs love, too, no matter what status that you're in. Mm -hmm. And I love that you pretty much said that. You know, we are getting ready to go to a break real quick, please. So just hold right here for me, and we're going to go ahead and transfer to Jerry, and he's going to play some beautiful music for us real quick. All right. This beautiful song right here is by our lovely guest, Talene. It's called Silent Night. Check it out. Oh, 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 oh,
power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double X. Positive power 21. Internet radio. You are listening to Gary Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Yes, welcome, welcome back to the Peach and Mosley Show, Prophetic, 
you know, vessel and you're hearing the, the words to the song just come to you uh, as the minstrel is just playing and, you know, he's in groove and in sync with you um, as well. It's, it's an awesome experience. Oh, that's phenomenal. I'm encouraged. I know the listening audience is encouraged, and I'm just so grateful for you. I'm so glad that you were here and just giving us such good nuggets today on Godly Connections and um, just giving us a different perspective how to look at life and look at everything that we experience and receive and hear from God truly uh, what is the next level and what's the next step for all of us. You have to let us know how we can connect back with you. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you can connect with me on social media. Um, my Facebook is, is Talene Music. That's T-A-L-E-I-N, and then the word music, M-U-S-I-C. Um, that's the same thing for Twitter. And just on Instagram, it's just Talene, T-A-L-E-I-N. Social media is probably the best way to connect with me. You know, the interesting thing, Lakeisha, is I have a website, and I don't really use my website like I'm supposed to, and that's terrible because that's one of the things that I do for a living. But you know how we always do things for everybody else and we forget about ourselves. <laughs> Yes, yes, I know. True, but, true. <laughs> but, but if you Google me, uh, T A L E I N, uh, you will also be able to, you know, find all of my social media platforms. But that is truly the best way to uh, reach out to me. Amazing. Well, listen, to audience, I definitely encourage you to stay connected to Lucille. She has going on. She has so much great music coming out. And we encourage you to come back to Wayne definitely and let us know all, anything that's happened with you, any updates that's going on with your ministry. Yes, ma'am, I certainly will. And thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for allowing me to come on and and just just be a light and a, 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 a sh just shouting, you know, out into the world. Uh, some of the things that God has placed on my heart and, and allowed me to experience in my journey. And I'm going to continue to pray for you, as I hope that you all will pray for me. And uh, bless you all. Thank you so much, Jerry, as well as Carlton McConnell, uh, for setting up this interview this evening. And blessings to all of you listeners. I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed and safe holiday season uh, with your loved ones and your family. God bless you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Celine. And now we're getting ready to go to our final segment, which is called the Teacher's Love Letter of Healing, Encouragement, and Empowerment. And we're going to go ahead and focus on the scripture in Acts 9. And we're going to focus on verses 1 through 8. I want us to really talk about Saul. A lot of times we do talk about Paul, but we don't really focus on the Saul part. Saul on his road to Damascus, you know, he was in route to kill, steal, and destroy more Christians. That was his rhythm. That was his goal. That was his journey at that moment. Um, but he had an encounter with Jesus. And this is a different type of encounter. He had an encounter with Jesus with him. Because he didn't see Jesus. He didn't, he didn't physically look at him. He heard him. And I want you to really focus on that at first. Heard him. He heard the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time in a different way. And he was that he was dead still in his track, you know, as far as everything that he was doing. And, you know, Jesus asked him, you know, what's going on? Why are you persecuting me? And, you know, Saul just didn't understand that. But when he realized that he was really persecuting himself at the end, Jesus was teaching him something, that as you persecute others, you're really persecuting yourself. And a lot of times that we begin to judge others for our perceived impressions on them. We really don't realize that they're not really whole within it. And what God really wants to talk to us about as far as, you know, connecting with him and how we would let him lead us is that all of us are on a journey. All of us connect with different people. And we sometimes take it um, to a different place and we expect them to be something that they're not. But really, God is really only wanting us to do an internal work within ourselves, and he wants us to understand that, listen, I am working on you daily. It's not about anything that you did bad, anything that you're doing horrible. He didn't judge Saul, but he saw the inner part of Saul. He saw Paul in Paul. And when 